Hello, my name is Wade Nomura, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. I've had the opportunity of traveling a lot of places around the world for Rotary, and I often see some pretty unique projects. This is one specific one that I'd like to share with you today. And with me to share that is Denise Haynes. Welcome, Denise. Thank you so much. Um, this project you have, we're going to talk about it real quickly, and then we're going to jump into it. But okay. um, it's 1,000 Flags is the name of the project? Yes, 1,000 Flags, and it is a weekend exhibit of 1,000 large flags in a park in Bakersfield, and it is to honor our first responders, our current military, and our veterans. Great. So um, before we get started, tell us a little bit about yourself. I have been born and raised in Bakersfield as, as my husband and uh, my parents, our parents actually went to high school together. So we are definitely local yodels. Um, <laughs> I went to high school in Bakersfield. I earned my bachelor's oh. and my master's degree in Bakersfield. So I didn't travel too far away from home. Um, I have been working with the county of Kern for 33 years wow. now. I'm actually a month away from retirement. <laughs> Good for you. So uh, that's, been, uh, that's been quite a journey. And uh, I joined Rotary 12 years ago, and that has been just an amazing experience. This year I'm serving as the club's president, and I'm having a blast. <laughs> Good for you. Now, how did you get involved with Rotary? My brother-in-law was a Rotarian for many years, and he invited me to join. And at the time, I was in a position with the county uh, that involved a lot of controversy and a lot of misunderstandings. And I thought if I were to be involved in Rotary, I could help um, waylay the rumors and waylay the misconceptions about the department I was in. So it was for the professional connections. Uh, that I joined, and of course, I've gotten professional connections and friendships, um, and way more out of it than I ever thought that I would. Now, um, you've been in Rotary for 12, 13 years. 12 years. And this is the first time you're serving as a president, correct? Yes, it took them about six years to talk me into <laughs> it. <laughs> Good for them. Uh, well, you're, it was worth the wait, trust me. I, I finally relented and said yes. <laughs> and the size of your club, how many members are in your club? We hang at about 70 members. Okay, that's and good so size I think it's a very good size club. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a good majority of those people who participate uh, physically in our projects, which is very nice. That that's is very, very nice. nice, yes. So the concept of this project, how did it come about? We had a member, uh, Becky, who had to leave us for a while and go back east. And while she was there, she joined a rotary. And that rotary back east did this 1,000 Flags project. And when she came back home to Bakersfield, she came like gangbusters with this idea of, we've got to do this project. It's amazing. It's 1,000 Flags. And, and Becky <laughs> talks at about 1,000 words a minute. And so <laughs> you really have to pay attention. And we were all... Um, reluctant and hesitant and a, and a little bit trepidatious about this, some of us more than others. And so the, those of us who said, okay, Becky, we trust you, we just, we jumped right in and brought it to Bakersfield. The first year, a lot of hand-holding on Becky's part. She had to do a lot of the footwork because we simply didn't know what to do or how to do it. Sure. But we've had it two years since, and the committees really clicked in. Everybody knows their jobs, and it, and it goes along pretty well. So what was the um, actual hardships that you faced in the planning stage? Was there anything that kind of jumped out that kind of slowed it down or was it all pretty much uh, smooth running? It was all the second and third year smooth running. The first year simply was we did not know what we were doing and it was a little bit difficult to wrangle it out of Becky, but we, but we did and once she was able to clarify things for us, but no, the the city of Bakersfield jumped right in right away as a partner. They donate the park to us for the weekend. Uh, we have um, businesses throughout the city who want to be a part of this magnificent event. We really have not run into any any roadblocks. It's been so well received by the community. Very good. Yes. Very good. And you did see the need for it also. It's something that the club wanted to contribute in, it sounds Absolutely. like. Absolutely. Once the club saw it, um, they were it's okay, we can be on board with this. So the second and third year definitely had way more club participation and understanding and, and then just the pride that goes along with this event. 
um, that we put on for the community. It draws thousands of people. I see that. So well, great. So let's. Uh, you brought some pictures with you. Yes, let's I did. Jump into these. Okay. So people can see what it actually what it looks like. So the the event takes place at the park at Riverwalk, okay. and that's this first picture is just the the stone that was laid when the park was there. Okay. Uh, these flags kind of give the public a tease. We post these flags at the entrance of the park at the beginning of the week, so they kind of know what is coming. Um, and in the week before is when the hard physical labor starts. Uh, probably Tuesday or Wednesday of that week, there's a group of us who goes to storage. And mind you, this is May in Bakersfield, so it's not cool. <laughs> right, right. So we form a human chain from inside this non-air conditioned storage box out to an empty trailer and literally pass along 1,000 pieces of rebar, 1,000 pieces of wow. PVC. Uh, dozens of boxes of folded flags and all of the other supplies until the empty trailer becomes full. Uh, and then the trailer heads off to the park um, and then it's staged there. Okay. And then on Friday, the, the week, the day before everything happens, we have surveyors descend upon the park at Riverwalk mm. and they place 1,000 chalk dots throughout the park. And these dots are strategically placed for two purposes. One, they have surveyed the park to avoid sprinkler pipes and sprinkler heads and park benches and park tables and barbecues. And two, so that when the flags are finally placed, they are aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. So the surveyors do that on Friday. And then on Saturday, um, news descends upon the park. This is Becky being mm -hmm. interviewed by okay. one of the media, so we get a lot of coverage. And then at that point on Saturday morning, dozens and dozens of volunteers show up to assemble the flags. And these volunteers are Rotarians, they're Boy Scouts, they're Girl Scouts, they're Honor Society members from the high schools, the Junior ROTC, the Young Marines, wow. just and community members who just show up. Sounds like it's the entire community. It That's is. They, they, is they just show up with their grandkids and their kids and they're on the bike path and they stop and they want to help. And it's just, I get goosebumps just talking about it. It's, it's an amazing it's feeling. So all these thousand flags have to get assembled one by one. And you take a PVC pipe and it's a shower curtain hanger and you have to Whoa. actually put the shower curtain hanger on the pipe through the flag the same exact way, top and bottom, or the flag won't fly right. Mm. And then once the flag is on the PVC pipe, you put the little gold ball that you see here on these flags mm -hmm. um, on top, it's the finial. Uh -huh. And uh, then the flag is assembled. Now, the first two years, we were able to put the flags in these large laundry bins. We just mm -hmm. put them all in there, and we wheeled the laundry bins out to the park, and they were taken out and posted. This past year, we didn't have the luxury of the laundry bins, and so our volunteers carried the flags, probably two and three at a time, sure. out, to the, out to the park to post them. Uh -huh. So this is a picture of one of the first two years when the kids were all taking the the flags out and putting them onto the post. So the rebar, at, at the same time that the flags are being assembled, the rebar is being pounded into the ground okay. right on top of those white dots. Okay. So we have several, mostly men, because it is hard physical labor, pounding rebar into the ground. And then the flag, the PVC pipe, just fits right over the top of the rebar. So when they get out in the field, that's what they're doing. They're putting the flags over. These are our young Marines. They're just, they're, they are so dedicated. Mm -hmm. They're wonderful young men. They get in formation and they take their marching orders and then they help us um, all throughout the weekend. And we just love to have them. At noon on Saturday, we have opening ceremonies. Uh, we always have the Star Spangled Banner. We raise the flag. Uh, that is done by one of the local ROTCs. This is our South High ROTC. Mm -hmm. They help us to raise the flag. This flag is a, it is especially tall one. It's not one of the ones that we post, but we get an extra large flag, and we do uh, quite the ceremony with the Star Spangled Banner, and they raise it up. And there it is finally up at Very noon, nice. and so then the official start to the weekend is at noon on Saturday. Okay. And then throughout the weekend, uh, we have an information booth, a breakfast Rotarian staff a booth. People can come in and ask about the project itself. Uh, they can purchase little flags if they'd like mm -hmm. to. They can also sponsor a flag, which is very, very special. Um, for $50, they can sponsor a flag, and they do that in honor of a loved one who has passed or is currently serving, and again, first responder or a military. 
And once the weekend is over, they can come back to the booth and they get their flag that has been ceremoniously oh. uh, folded and it is presented to them along with a certificate that says, you know, in honor of the individual and their rank and their service in the years that they were there. So that's what we do at the booth all weekend long. Mm -hmm. And we just, we have a, a good time while we're there. Now does that actually serve as a fundraising element for the community or is it most, more it's kind of break even? It's mostly a community service and we mostly break even. Okay. Yeah, okay, so awesome. we have it's termed a it a service. community service. That is a yes. great service. And so the, the funds that we make are basically replace all the flags that we right. sell. Okay. So. And then we also, during the weekend, we fly each flag for each of the, the branches of the military. And so that's fun because we, of course, get all branches of the military, sure. all veterans and currently serving. So it's nice for them to see their flags. And we also post historical flags. And we're up to nine this year. This was taken the first year on and each flag is a poster board that explains what that uh, flag okay. meant at the time that it was created. And it's amazing how many people stop and actually read the explanation mm. of the flag. Um, and of course, they're especially beautiful when the wind is blowing because they're all out and unfurled. Right. And then, of course, people just wander through the park all weekend long. It's a very reflective, even though there's thousands of people, there's hardly any noise because people are just, they're so reflective sure. of what they're seeing and they're deep in thought mm -hmm. um, and they're talking with their loved ones and so they're wandering through the flags. You, you could actually see the spots in some of those pictures also. Yes, there. yeah. Yeah, that's, that's definitely. nice. Definitely. And it's just, it's remarkable to walk through them and you want to, you just you want to pass up and down and all around and and then when you're standing back you can see the whole park and just it's nothing but flags and it's just an That's amazing nice. amazing sight I know it looks a little dry here you're making comment on a few of these pictures that the first the two years we were still in the, in the drought and so the park the, the grass was mostly brown and the lake was hardly full at all so this year of course the the lake was full and the reflection of the flags in the yeah. lake was amazing i see it in the picture here yeah yes. it definitely yeah. So. It's very nice so it was it was nice definitely so you can see i mean that's only part that's not all thousand right. of them that's right. just one portion <laughs> of the park so you can that imagine. is impressive yeah, so there's kind of the dead grass right there. <laughs> At the top of that hill is the bike path, and so during the week, um, or during the weekend, people are riding by on their bikes and going, oh my gosh, and they'll stop and get off their bikes and they'll walk them through the flags. Nice. And uh, people come out with their families, of course. It's beautiful. This Very is one of my favorites. It's got the reflection. It has the bird flying. Mm -hmm. um, I created a book uh, for Thousand Flags, and this is actually the cover of the oh. of the book. But again, okay. you can see that was one of the drought years. You right. can see how the low of the lake is. <laughs> Water's yeah. down a bit. At night, then at sunset, we do have a, full, a flag lowering ceremony. We have the Bakersfield High ROTC come in, and they lower the flag. Uh, the first year we had a bugler, his name is Otto. Otto was 93 years old. Wow. He was playing taps and it was just sweet as it could be. So we take the large flag down at night and that's the ROTC. And there's Otto. Oh. <laughs> precious man, precious, yes. precious man. <laughs> and again, they fold the flag and at the end of the ceremony, they, pre they present it to the president. And this year was uh, Kay's year and mm -hmm. so Kay is there being presented with the flag. And members of the public have been there all day and they recognize that something is going on so they gather in the courtyard and they watch. And again, you can hear a pin drop. Mm. It is just, it's quite moving. And that's the ROTC group that helped us that particular year. Now how do you recruit the people from the community? Is it something that's <laughs> kind of become tradition or do you reach out to them? The first year we did do a shout out through our, we were able to be on a morning news program and we didn't know how many people it was going to take to put a thousand flags up in the park. <laughs> so we said, please come and help. And they did. And now people know, even though it's only been two more years, they know this is going to happen Memorial Day and they come and help. Um, but past that, we know that Boy Scout troops like to do things like this and, and the Girl Scout troops. Uh, seniors in high school have to have community service hours right. in Kern County, right. so we recruit the honor society groups and give them their community service hours. Nice. Um, and then military groups also want to help. And again, just people who, who hear about it. Um, I have a, a co-worker 
who showed up with uh, his wife and two kids just out of the blue said, hey, Denise, we want to help. It's like, okay. <laughs> and then this past year I had, um, it makes me really emotional. I had a, a man come up Saturday morning. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> he, um, he had his dog uh -huh. and we were putting the flags together. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. And he said, can I put one flag up? I said, well, of course, you can put up as many flags as you want. He said, no, I just need one to honor my dad. Oh, that was nice. So anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. We get, we get moments like this this whole, the whole weekend. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, it, and uh, Becky and I are forever crying. <laughs> 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 so that's how we get them on Monday. Monday, of course, being Memorial Day. We have a huge vendor fair, and we have a lot of, of um, veteran groups come out. We have the Daughters of the American Revolution. We have Wounded Heroes uh, come out. We do have a local Wounded Heroes group. We have the Kern County Veterans Association come out. So many of our booths are military-related, but we also have fun booths that sell just fun stuff. Okay. Uh, and so the families like to wander through. Um, these are the Daughters of the American Revolution, which my mother-in-law just happened to find out she is. And oh. so now she's a member of this, wow. which is kind of fun. <laughs> <Yeah. It is. laughs> and then, um, again, people are just gathering in the park. They enjoy the day. This, this lady was painting um, a view of the flags. And uh, here's a veteran. These two happen to be waiting for the program. We have a program right at noon. Uh, we have inspirational speakers uh, come and talk to us. And again, just people hanging out, having a good time. These ladies, I just couldn't resist taking a picture of them. They're absolutely adorable in their, in their garb, their red, white, and blue garb. These gentlemen have shown up every year, and people just get a kick out of taking their pictures with them because they're, they walk around. And again, it's Bakersfield in May. It is really hot. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and these suits are wool. They're and wool. so I just feel really badly for them. But now, do they do that show every day or just on the Monday? Just on the Monday. Just, just on, the, on Monday. the Monday. They okay. come and they walk around, and people are taking pictures. The uh, vendors then, is that Monday only also then? Yes, the okay. program is just on okay. is just on Monday. Yes, and here we have just a couple of Rotarians chatting, and of course we have young and old alike <laughs> come, and uh, many of the parents dress up their children, and she was of course a sweetie pie, and uh, parents of Rotarians come. Oh, okay. Yes, and so that's two moms here, and then here's just a view of our vendor fair. As you can see, there's lots and lots of people enjoying lots of people. the day. Yeah, lots yeah, of people. yeah. Have a good draw there. And again, they just, they sit and enjoy and they reflect upon the beauty of what they're seeing. And this is one of my favorite pictures. Yeah, there's a nice just picture. Just a sweet older couple just chilling by the <laughs> lake, enjoying the flags, the view from across the lake. This is our drum corps. Bakersfield College uh, has an amazing drum corps. They're award winning and they have agreed to play for us all three years. Nice. And so they start the program uh, and they're just, they're fun to hear and they're regal to watch and... Um, it's actually a high school group then? It's a junior college. Junior college It's a junior group. college, okay. yes. And here they're doing their rifle toss. <laughs> Impressive. And they all get caught, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> and we do present the colors right at noon, and this is again by one of the ROTC groups. Mm -hmm. And the South High ROTC brings out their large flag, and while we're doing the flag raising, they do this out in the park. And just a view of the crowd enjoying... Um, the ceremonies. This is one of our speakers. And one of our Rotarians, <laughs> uh, Jackie, Queen Jackie, we call her. She was, <laughs> she was president a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. She has a lot of fun. And this is at the end of Monday. The flags come out of the park and then uh, anyone who wants, but mostly we get the ROTC kids to fold them up properly. Right. And they all get piled on a table. And then as I said, people sponsor them and then we present them these folded flags. But what time would this be that they're actually taking things back down again to have enough time to get them presented? Well, they start coming down at about 2 o'clock in okay. the afternoon, and by 4.35, the park is back to normal, okay. which is very sad. <laughs> yeah, this is true. It's very sad. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> but here you can see the rebar that they took the PVC mm -hmm. pipe off of, mm -hmm. and they're taking the finial off the top of there and unhooking the flags. And then the rebar is coming off. And we have them carrying the flags. Again, we didn't have the bins, and so they literally carry the flags wow. back. 
And here they are staging all of the poles to go into the trailer to back to storage. And these flags that aren't sponsored or sold, they are folded carefully, not ceremoniously, but carefully, mm -hmm. and put back in the bins. And then we have one final ceremony, one final taps, and we're done until the next year. Wow, wow. Yeah. That is a great one. So um, tell me this, as far as members of your club, how many of you actually get involved with the project? I would say at least half, at least at half, least half okay. get involved with the project because we staff the information booth all three days. So mm -hmm. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we have to staff the information booth and we ask people to sit for two to three hours and we do have them there from nine until six. And so that requires a lot of different people. Then of course we have about a dozen or so people who help with the with the planning of the event and get involved uh, to that extent. Okay. So it does it does draw a good portion of us. Yeah. And then those who who are not able to actually be on the committee or participate that way, they at least come out and wander through the flags, and nice. they they do come to either the flag raising ceremonies or the flag lowering because we have one every morning and every night. We raise the flag and we lower the right. flag. Right. Yeah. Now, as far as uh, community impacts, I see this as being huge as far as public relations, public image. Um, have you noticed that a lot of people in your community recognize you because of the flag project that you've done? Not me personally, but they do know the rotary name and the breakfast right. rotary name because of the, because of the project. Uh, so, and they, they appreciate it. And, and during the weekend, we get so many thanks. And the thanks that are, I mean, all thanks are, are special, but the extra special ones are from the veterans and from the first responders. True. And uh, again, as I did before, there's a lot of tears. It's just an emotional weekend, right. and especially when we get thanked in that way. Mm -hmm. I can see that. <laughs> um, and then as far as connections, do those connections last, I would say, throughout the year? Are those uh, relationships between the other organizations something that you um, try and share back and forth? We work with the interact groups, of course, mm -hmm. uh, throughout the year. The other groups, I wouldn't say as much, but okay. they do look forward each year. When we call them, it's like, oh, good, I'm so glad you called. We really <laughs> want to help again. Okay. Uh, during the year, there hasn't been that connection as much as just towards the project. Got it. Now, the 1,000 flags, was that uh, just a, a number that was to be attained? Is it a 1,000 flag project, or would you go bigger and beyond that. <laughs> well, I tell you what, we have enough time and enough volunteers to put out more than a thousand flags <laughs> okay. because we start at uh, like seven o'clock on Saturday morning and by 10, everything is done. I, and so we, we have the time, we have the room to put up a thousand. Um, and I do recall that there's something special about that number, but I just can't remember what it is. That was the reason I but asked. That. The okay. first year we did actually put up more than a thousand because we just they got carried away planting the rebar and sure. and, and we had enough. Uh, but this last year, I believe we stuck right at 1,000 flags. And when people first hear about the project, they think we're going to put out the little teeny ones, right, you know, and right. you're just going to kind of walk and trip over them. So when they see that they're actually full-size flags, they're Those are amazed. impressive. <laughs> they, right. are, they definitely are. <laughs> that was, I could see that happening. Um, as far as, here's one of the logistical parts, getting those dots out there, knowing where to locate the rebar so you don't go through sprinkler lines, electrical lines, things like that. How did you end up charting those? They're actually surveyed. We wow. get the park architectural plans mm -hmm. with the plumbing attached to the architectural plans, and we have a surveyor in our group uh, who assisted with that. He was actually able to survey where the dots could be. So they are they're measured, and when they're out there on Friday, they have their survey tools, and they are measuring, and they are citing where those dots go. Um, and he has, and there's four, at least four survey firms in town who have participated in this free of charge Wow! every wow. year. So how much time does that take for them to actually prepare that site? I think Must be weeks. No. Well, since it's been surveyed once, this the actual true. surveyed plans have been drawn. Now it's just a matter of, of making sure everything is still accurate. Nothing has moved as, as far as uh, sprinkler pipes and heads. Uh, but it takes hours for them to do the dots because they still sure. have to do the measuring. So it takes right. hours, right. at least half a day. Wow. wow. And the size of this park, how big is it? Is uh, Would you guess a football field? Oh, Double a football field? I would say it's at least 
three football football fields wow. long and at least two wide. Nice at the area that we are covering. Wow, so it's quite large then. Yes. <laughs> is it visible by, I would say, any of the freeways um, access into Not town? Not a freeway, or? but one of the main roads in Bakersfield okay. borders it. Okay. So people on what we call Stockdale Highway yeah. Yeah, okay. drive by and you can't miss it. <laughs> you I wouldn't can't think miss so. It. If you're driving by, you're definitely <laughs> gonna see it. <laughs> Good. Um, on the flags, you said that you have some people contribute $50 to um, support one of the flags. How many of those um, do you usually do in a year, would you guess? Maybe half, a quarter? No, it's probably between 100 and 150 okay. that we get of people nice. who want to sponsor a flag. Have you noticed it's been in the area or out of the area? Or it's, mostly? it's both. Okay. We do get, I mean, even though it's a... Bakersfield Center event. We do get uh, members from our outlying communities, all of Kern County, that come into town. So it's, it is a good representation of Kern County. The reason I ask that, it seems logical that this could become kind of a district supported event too. Oh, absolutely. You have the support absolutely. from, there's a lot of um, other clubs that don't have anything specific like this. That would be an outstanding project. Yeah, to bring us all together. Yeah, that would be, yeah it really would that be. Would be Amazing. <laughs> yeah, and, and honoring the right people for yes. the right reasons. Yes. That's good. Very good. Um, where do you store them? We, we actually rent a storage. <laughs> oh, so you have to rent a storage. <laughs> we have to rent a storage. Now, okay. actually, we do have a storage for our uh, rotary. It had to grow once we got the flags <laughs> project. We had to rent a larger one. Uh, but, but when everything is taken back, it is just the reverse of what it was, a human chain takes them from the trailer and passes them along and then stores them in, in, the, in the storage. And they're in the back of the storage. And again, you're talking about six, seven foot tall PVC pipe and sure. three foot long pieces of rebar. This is not lightweight stuff and it's May in Bakersfield. So uh, it's dirty, grimy, sweaty work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, once you have the pieces done and completed, you don't have to replace very many. Just no, some yeah, the rebar, the PVC, that's all taken care of. It's just the flags that we have to replace. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, good. Good. And the flags, do you get from um, a specific vendor? Becky has a source that she purchases well, she them from every year. They expect her call. They know that she's going to be ordering, you know, anywhere from fifty to a hundred flags. She has a certain kind that she likes to get. We have, uh, you know, in pictures, you have flat pictures and you have satin. Well, the same thing with flags. You have flat and you have satin. And the satin ones are way more pretty and <laughs> they uh, fly better. Right. <laughs> well, Denise, thank you very much for sharing that project. It's an outstanding project and it sounds like we could all get involved with that. So it's thank a good one. Thank you so much for thank letting you. me thank, share and it. And thanks for coming. Thank you. So everybody, thank you very much for joining us. I hope you got some interest in this one because I found it quite fascinating. It is a project that affects a lot of people and ties you into that community. With that, thank you very much, and we will see you next time.